It's a guessing game. <laughs> I mean, do, and do people still talk like that? Daughter. Daughter. I even went east end there with daughter. Judge. Snickers? Mm. Oh, Knickers. Oh, so just take the S off and I got it right. <laughs> Is he a real person? Steve? Mm. Believe. Okay. Hair. Trouble. Bruiser. Mm. Boozer. Oh. Money. Face. Ass. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Please. Mm. Ah. Uh, stairs. Chases. Mm. Todger. Mm. <laughs> Lodger. Uh, Queen. Queen. I've heard that one before. Uh, tax, tax. I don't know. Money? Cousin. Oh, wow. Good start. <laughs> I think the opportunity of doing something that I hadn't done before, uh, and sort of exploring a different part of my personality and kind of actually in a sense going back to my roots more more so than most of the other parts I've played. Like a lot of the parts I've played have been kind of upper class, sort of very well to do kids who have been very well educated and that wasn't really my upbringing whatsoever. Uh, so not that I was ever been, I've ever been in prison, um, but people I know have been. <laughs> so I think that it just sort of seemed to me like I hadn't explored that and I wanted to do that really. My little brother in real life plays my little brother in this. Um, so I think any moment that we had together was quite memorable. But I just remember kind of looking back at every moment where one of us had to kind of, you know, uh, um, go to a certain place, like kind of constantly taking a step back and taking my actor hat off and my brother putting my hat, brother hat on and being very proud of him. So kind of watching him fly um, through this was, was, was really what I think made it, made it most memorable. Because it was such a short shoot, very condensed, we had a lot of material to get through each day. I've always watched people who are able and confident enough to, to mess up a certain shot and do a little prank in the middle of a take. I never felt <laughs> the confidence. I think I've always just worried that, you know, time is money. And a lot of the jobs I worked on more recently have been very kind of independently kind of thrown together. Um, and so you just don't have the time to mess around as much. We had a really wonderful cast and we had a lot of fun sort of running around, the, you know, the Olympic Stadium kind of with guns and cars. So it's quite, it's quite, quite enjoyable. I'd never punched anyone in my entire life. I'd never been punched. I remember when I first sort of went sparring at this local boxing gym in Hammersmith, I was just getting used to punching someone's face as opposed to gloves, you know? Uh, it, it, was, it was really gruelling. And I think that was also down to the fact that we'd just given birth to our daughter. I was also kind of in and out of that. Um, headspace as well. The, the funniest thing is that the first day I ever sparred, um, I, I sparred a, a professional boxer <laughs> and I had no headgear on, I had like, um, but it was all sort of, you know, contained and well looked after. But I still managed to get a bust lip and a black eye. Uh, and I then had to go and pick up my little boy from nursery. So I kind of turned up to his nursery all battered and bruised. But um, other than that, no, I mean, it was just like little scrapes and things, but. We didn't have a dialect coach, um, so really what you hear is what you get. And it was kind of something that me and my brother tried to find. We didn't want to go sort of over the top East End and feel plummy. And also you have to realise that my character's been in prison for a while and we figured that actually he might have been trying to hide a bit of who he is. That's my excuse for <laughs> a really bad East End London accent. That day of filming, I mean, the guy that we're fighting, up, fighting against, Derek, Heggy, he is a, a bare knuckle boxing champion. I, literally within the first five seconds, I had to smash a bit of glass on his head, like sugar glass. The problem was, you know, sugar glass can still be quite sharp. So I hit him in the head with this sugar glass and his head started bleeding, but this guy is a tank. Like, so I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He's like, oh, it's fine. I'm, like, I'm used to a lot worse. You know, do it again, do it again. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to hit you anymore. Noel is, is very, very up for anything, like was willing and wanting to kind of do his own stunts. And so the two of us, I think there's only one moment within that fight that we don't do. Everything else, you know, 
him being thrown into an ironing board like that that was all Noel wanting to do that himself so it was, it was kind of it was really enjoyable and it was really kind of exhilarating once you kind of got going because we only had like literally one day to shoot all of that or like not even a whole day I think like half a day to shoot that whole fight sequence and it's quite horrific you know in, in many respects so it was, it was quite a, a, a testing day but fun. I think this is a, a reinvention this is the, the Charlie's Angels of today and of course the previous sort of times that we've seen it it's, it's been of the time that it came out where I think it was originally 60s or 70s when it came out and it was very of that time and very sexy in a way and I think this is very sexy but in a very kind of modern way um, it's a sort of retelling it's very female centered very funny very witty uh, he's got a great cast um, Patrick Stewart's in it as well as with you know the three angels I don't know man like it's it's been done so I, I feel like when you when they're sort of rehashing films so much at the moment I think it, it'll be too early to say let's jump on board and be a part of something that was popular 10 years ago but uh, who knows Finnick for sure I mean I know that Vampires technically live forever. <laughs> yeah, Finnick. I have to stay with Finnick. Patterson is like, come on. Again, that's not for me to say. I, I, I mean, I think like any human being on the planet, I think they're always a lot of fun. They're the sort of films I enjoy watching. They're the sort of films I know my little boy and girl will kind of grow up watching. And um, I, I, yeah, I, I love the phenomenon that is the, the Marvel Universe. Never say never. I'd love to be a part of anything sort of like that. I'm basically trying to sell myself for any other job at the moment. I feel like Marvel, yes, I'll tick that. Uh, I will do anything for money. Uh, no, if it was the right thing and the right time and the right place, uh, yeah, I, I'd happily jump at the chance of being a cam even a cameo or something like that.